It's finally the summer holidays, and what is not better than playing the computer game and just sitting down, drinking your LucasAid, and just enjoying the day. But then, your annoying mother has to come in saying, why don't you have a flipping hobby? Well, I just don't have a hobby. Or do I? Hmm. So that got me thinking, and this week's episode is the top 10 weirdest hobbies. So we're starting at number 10, the hobby of mooing. Y y yes, you did hear me right. Mooing, as in moo. We all know people are superb at animal sounds, but there is actually a whole competition what many people go to to see who is the best at mooing. Moo. However, if you said that to my slightly deaf dad, he would probably turn up with a lawnmower to mawnmower. Moo. Moo. That was a bad joke. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, this sounds completely ridiculous. People go into a competition and just go moo to see who is the best mooer. Or, pretty much funnier, the best looking cow. Yeah. But, it isn't that ridiculous because. And all with a camera gets a thousand views on YouTube. Woohoo! Moo! I bet get subscribed for that. Now number nine is faking your death. Who the heck have a hobby where you fake your death? Is it camera still? Ah, oh, sorry, I was just dead. Now, a guy called Chuck Lamb is better known as the dead body guy. As you can see by the pictures, what should be on the screen, if I could be asked. He wanted to be an actor, but like most inspiring actors, he was unable to get around to a speaking part. Pretty much like me before I discovered the camera. Yeah. So, he went for non-speaking roles. And what character doesn't speak? Of course, I know, dead bodies. Now, the hobby is not just a waste of time, because Chuck Lamb, he actually takes photos of all of his dead appearances, and he puts them on his website. Hopefully, the link should be in the description if I can find it. Yeah. If I if I fake being dead at school, they probably think I'm dead. It's not a good idea. Don't try that hobby at home. Or anywhere else for that matter. Now we all love dog competitions. And that is our number 8. The hobby of competitive dog grooming. Not as fun as it sounds. Now like I said we have all seen dog competitions. Where little dogs with their pretty large owners. Run around the track and look pretty stupid. And hilarious when something goes wrong. <laughs> Better not remind her of that. But there is some competitions where it gets a little extreme, especially for the dog. Of course, this is where you dress up your poodle to look like something it isn't. When, when you see the pictures, you understand. So looking at these pictures, dressing them up to look like a tiger or a dinosaur or a panda, yeah, that is actually a hobby. And uh, I think it's more of a hobby to the owners and not really the dogs, because I don't think they have a choice. Right, Ruby? <laughs> She's my Yorkie. Literally, I dressed her up as a Yorkie biscuit. Hey, women not allowed. <laughs> They're mostly put on by the National Dog Groomers Association of America, but there are a bunch of more across the whole world. So, much to the suffering and sadness of dogs across the country, at least we get the entertainment of seeing how mental the owners think they are to look at the dogs. Now, that came out completely wrong as well. Just try and come around that. Yeah, dog grooming. Now quickly through number seven. This is milk bottle collecting. So do you ever fancy collecting all milk bottles with all our little different labels and pretty much stale milk? Ew. Well, Paul Luke likes milk and not just drinking it either. He actually likes collecting the bottles. So yeah, there's our seven. Milk bottle collecting. Fun! If you like milk. No, definitely if you like milk. Now, number six is soap carving, so it is actually real, not just what you see prisoners doing in films. And actually, there's a pretty good art to it. 
Now I wouldn't mind doing some sub carving, however my dad needs to use it in the bath, so it wouldn't be nice making something carving a rose and then him wiping it over his ass. Yeah. But hey, it's nice for the art. Soap carving, good hobby, but weird. Now we're halfway through, and number five is another type of art. This is using them old 80s plastic boxes with the black things in, while actually playing music. Weird. The cold cassettes. I know, they're a weird invention as well. But this is making art with them, ripping the tape out, and very simple, and making art. As you can see by this picture, whoever made this is a great hobby, and I personally don't think it's weird, but I think it's cool. Tape art. Ooh. I wonder if I could use my mum's rare, rare, rare cassette. <laughs> Mum! <laughs> no, don't! Ow! I don't think she likes me using that cassette. Ow. Now the next one, number four, is literally as it sounds. Train spotting. You stand on the platform and you spot trains and it would be a bit weird if you don't actually see any considering you're standing on a platform next to a train track hmm. anyway it is a little more to train spotting than you think actually it is a pretty good hobby by a lot of people around the world and yes that is pretty much what there is to it just staring at trains but you know to down on a little bit of paper see what trains you see but uh, I could do that easily. Looking on the timetable, you can pretty much predict what the trains are. So yes, this is a real hobby, and yes, more than one person does it. What's that, man? Ooh, a virgin train just went past. Whoa! Now, number three is something you should definitely not try at home with your mum's iron. That's right, number three is extreme ironing. So yes, I mean ironing as in removing wrinkles from your clothes, not whether you were thinking. This kind of ironing, people find weird our unusual ways of trying to iron their little knickers or top. 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 But extreme, well, I mean extreme. Do you want to do your ironing dangling off a cliff edge? Or how about doing your ironing while in a lava pit? There's another thing. Why do I do ironing while skydiving? Oh, so I'd have been done. Damn. So, yep, next time your mum nags you to do the ironing, say, go and do it on the cliff. And she'll probably next knock you into next week, but still, say, it's my hobby, and she might let you do it. See, mum, I do have a hobby, ironing on the cliff. Woo! Now, at number two, this is a bit weird, but truck spotting. Now, again, just like train spotting, is pretty much all you do. Now this is very famous around Eddie Stobart, a British firm, and uh, pretty much pretty famous. Yeah. All they do is go to the truck depot with a little notepad and get down all the names. If you don't know already, every Eddie Stobart has a girl's name towards it. Pretty weird in itself, but still people like collecting these names. And if they just submitted their name, it would be easier not to go truck spawn. But people enjoy it. Now, they take years and years to find every single name. For me, thanks to Google, it takes me five minutes. Oh yes, what's that? Oh, new truck's out. Google way! Beep. Ooh, it's about 50 results. I better get my notepad out because I don't think I have that name. And finally, number one is polishing dirt. Yes, it sounds weird, and I can tell you, it is weird. But, believe it or not, it's possible to polish dirt. Essentially, you make a ball of mud and draw the moisture out of it, while coating it with finer and finer grains of soil. Then you work with the dirt by hand polishing it into a high-gloss sophia. You're making art with your hands, literally, and with dirt. And uh, how effective is this technique? Well, the Mythbusters, we've all heard of the Mythbusters, use it to prove that you can, in fact, polish a turd. 
but we don't recommend that as a hobby because it would be pretty more weird than a hobby. So, uh, don't be going to the bathroom to polish a turd. Uh, I bet polish that. So there are 10 weird hobbies, and to shoot your mum up when she keeps asking you to get a hobby, just mention one of these and she will never speak to you again. RESULT! See you kids!